Hollow Knight's negative reviews get the same treatment as every other game. People say there's not enough sex. They name things that they die a lot to. People leave reviews that literally say absolutely nothing of value to someone who is on the fence about buying the game. They leave stupid fake negative reviews that are actually positive. And most importantly, they say very stupid things that don't make any sense. The deeper you go, the stronger your enemies get. They seem to be as strong as bosses from previous level. However, you don't get stronger proportionally. So it's quite annoying to lose ever five mins or be- I can't even read this. So it's quite annoying to lose ever five mins or beat mini bosses from 100,500 try. Jesus, that was hard to read. This just isn't true. Resources used to upgrade your nail are relatively well spaced out across the game's progression. Not to mention the charms and spells that help you tremendously in combat. I can't think of any areas in the game where the difficulty spike would be even as close to this big. And there are more than enough ways to make yourself stronger in order to fight the stronger enemies with ease. Perhaps there's a bit of an issue with not really utilizing everything that you've got at your disposal. You know, maybe you don't realize that there's items you can get. But outside of that, this is just sort of... It's just wrong. The negative review I resonated with the most is clearly this one. Uh, can we wheel it in please? Thank you. Yeah, uh, the entire game isn't wheelchair accessible. Like the entirety of Hollow Nest isn't at all accessible to individuals in wheelchairs. There's no ramps. There's barely any elevators. And quite frankly, this is disgusting. The Hollow Nest City Council should have addressed this sort of thing years ago, but of course they didn't. You know, corrupt politicians lining their pockets while the citizens struggle. It's the classic, really. You know, the Pale King is, you know, he's a wealthy man. Have you seen the palace he lives in? Look at how many buzz saws he buys. But you can't even make any wheelchair ramps. Disgusting. So there's this one guy who left this really long comment that said a whole bunch of things, but I literally didn't screenshot any of it except this one part. Too much focus on combat when the combat is overly simplistic and not very good. What? What are you talking about? Hollow Knight has one of the most elegant combat systems that I've ever encountered in any video game. What the hell is this man talking about? Hollow Knight's combat is very simple. It literally consists of two buttons. One button swings your nail and one button shoots a spell. This simplicity is very intentional and very clever because the combat's depth often comes from the enemies rather than the player's abilities. Some basic enemies will just walk slowly across the floor and they're very easy to kill. But the majority of enemies will force you to choose your moments to attack. And the boss fights are of course exactly the same. When you attack and how well you dodge is all the combat needs to be completely captivating for the entire runtime of the game. Because the skill ceiling to the combat is clearly very, very high. The combat being simple doesn't mean there isn't a ton of depth to it. Because there is. But that depth comes not from the options the player has, but instead your decisions made in the fight and how you execute your movement. The combat in Hollow Knight is masterfully designed because its simplicity makes it very easy to understand for someone who's brand new. But the enemy design allows for almost infinite amounts of complexity to be added into that combat, so long as the enemy and boss design is creative enough for that. Although having said all that, that does lead me into a small nitpick that I'd like to make. Contact damage. This review is clearly a joke, right? Like, I understand that. But funnily enough, it is actually something I want to talk about. You see, if you have a boss fight where just touching the boss makes you take damage, then the boss's attacks need to be designed with that in mind. And sometimes Hollow Knight doesn't do that very well. The best example of this, in my opinion, is Nosk. Nosk isn't a particularly hard boss fight, at least not in my opinion. But sometimes he can be a bit of a bastard because he sprints from one side of the room to the other constantly. But every so often, he he'll abruptly stop dead in the middle of the room so that he can shoot a bunch of goop everywhere. But merely touching Nosk at any point will make you take damage. So him stopping dead like this is basically an attack in and of itself. If you're trying to be aggressive and chase him down to get damage in, if he just stops dead, you're guaranteed to get hit by him. And him stopping like this has no telegraph whatsoever. Usually, if a boss is going to attack, there will be a small animation called a telegraph. Telegraph animations are these little wind-ups that boss 
bosses do right before they're about to do an attack. These are done so that the player actually has time to react to the boss's move, and shorter telegraph animations make for harder boss fights, because you have less time to react to the boss's attacks. Nosk's attacks have telegraph animations just like anything else would, but him stopping like this isn't considered an attack at all, so it doesn't have a telegraph animation. But if you're chasing him to deal damage and he stops dead, you're guaranteed to take damage from him, despite the game not really considering that move an attack at all. It forces you to play very safe in a way that the developers likely didn't foresee, and this happens in other boss fights too. P5 Markov. Yeah, me too, buddy. Me too. Markoth is a hard boss fight. Markoth is a little bitch. You might not realize it in the base game because you can sort of just face tank him until he dies, but when you face him in the Hall of Gods and the Pantheon, suddenly it becomes more apparent that this boss is very, very difficult. And Markoth also has a very nasty habit of just stopping instantly in the middle of the room. And that's not the reason why he's so hard, but you know, it, it doesn't help, right? I really enjoyed Celeste, for example, and was hoping for something similar. Both games have it similar, okay, but Celeste and Hollow Knight aren't even in the same genre. Celeste is a 2D platformer, where the core focus is the movement and the platforming. Hollow Knight is a metroidvania. The combat and exploration and the upgrade systems take center stage instead of the movement itself. There is a couple of platforming sections in Hollow Knight, but they're not the focus of the game. Reality is, the only similarity between Celeste and Hollow Knight is that they're both both 2D. You know what's funny is that I made a video a while ago in 2021 where I read Celeste's negative reviews and someone there actually said that they wished that Celeste was more like Hollow Knight. So if these two guys could like communicate to each other maybe they'd both get games they liked. People just like don't know what genres are I guess. They just see 2D games all stood next to each other and they go oh well they all look the same so they must be the same. Look at them. The biggest complaint in all of these negative reviews by a very very large margin is the backtracking. People just clearly hate backtracking. So much so that they love everything about the game except playing it. People think that the checkpoints are too far away from bosses or other dangerous areas. They think that the enemies become tedious to get past when you're backtracking. They think that getting lost is frustrating because the game doesn't signal you where to go. And they think the map is terrible. Okay, well, the map is pretty terrible, I'll give you that one, but all these other things I'm not so sure about. The game does have backtracking, and I guess whether it's excessive or not is entirely subjective. But it's a Metroidvania. The entire premise of the game relies on backtracking as a concept. Getting some upgrade that allows you to access an area you couldn't go into before is core to the genre functioning, and I think this is a good thing. I think it's satisfying to get an upgrade in the future and then remember, oh, there's this thing I saw in this one place and I bet I could go there now that I have like wings or whatever. But the issue ends up being that you can't realistically remember every single area in the entire game. And the map is too dog shit to reliably help people remember where these newly accessible areas are. Because maybe you'll remember like one or two inaccessible paths, but you won't remember even close to every single one. The map has these little markers you can buy from a Zelda, but you can't label your markers, so you might not remember why you left a marker somewhere in the first place. Because I personally don't think that the backtracking excessive at all, but the lack of a good map can sometimes make it hard to remember what your new upgrade actually allows you to access. And even if you do remember, finding where exactly it was can be hard on a first playthrough. The one I don't understand though is the thing about benches. Any notable area where there's a boss or something will have a bench relatively close nearby. It's not right next to the boss room, but it's relatively close. I can't think of any areas in the game where this isn't true. Maybe there is, but I don't recall them. But these reviews seem to think that every single chapter checkpoint is just a million miles away from every single important area. I never found this to be the case personally, and the fast travel points that you can access usually take you to a wide enough array of places that you can realistically reach anywhere you want to go in not very long. In reality, the issue is not knowing where to go. On a first playthrough, these treks take far longer because you don't know where you're going. But as you learn the map more and more, this time spent just walking places is dramatically shorter. And understandably, people get frustrated by just walking around lost sites. Sometimes. But once you've found the way to go one time, finding the way again is much easier. If you're not a fan of the genre, then maybe you don't care enough to find your way even the one time. But I think this game actually has less of this getting lost feeling than a lot of other games I've played in the genre. There is a difference between making a game difficult and making it so frustrating that it stops being fun. There's a difference between having very hard bosses that a player wants to keep coming back to try and beat and making the player spend 10 minutes just to travel back to the boss fight every time they die. I don't know why this kind of game design is considered good.
Listen, Hollow Knight is a hard game, sure, but like, you can't be serious. Like, come on. You don't have to spend 10 minutes backtracking to the boss you just died to. You just don't have to do that. Unless you missed the bench that you're supposed to sit on that's incredibly close by, this just isn't the case at all. The boss fights are hard, but they're also fair. They've got the same design philosophy as a game like Dark Souls would have with its bosses. It's challenging and it doesn't pull punches, but it's never unfair. It's never pulling any shenanigans to get cheap hits. Well, rarely at least. And when you do finally beat it, it's incredibly rewarding because it was actually challenging. It wasn't incredibly easy and only there for spectacle. And it was challenging in a satisfying way, where the boss's attacks were actually challenging to dodge. It wasn't just some difficulty modifier that makes the enemy deal three times the damage for no reason. The game is rewarding because of its difficulty level. And if we subtract the part about backtracking for 10 minutes, which is so over-exaggerated that it's basically a lie, then your comment basically reads, I was so bad at Hollow Knight that I left a negative review. Which is bold. I'll give you that. You've got some bollocks, but I'm not sure it's the best argument in the world. Okay, last one, last one. This game did not cost enough money. I should have had to pay more. Jesus, Silk Song's gonna make a mint for Team Cherry, isn't it?